return to the scene of the biggest crime that was ever committed against the people of Barbados. We have returned to the scene of the hopes that David Thompson and the people of the Democratic Labour Party put on the people of Barbados. On this very site was where David Thompson and his people duped the people of Barbados, duped the Belgians. And I said, he stand up, you know, and he, he, he picked cross, he had up a big screen. And he said, bring up that chair, bring up that one. I can't see it from where I am. Bring up that one. And he called this, he used this highway as a metaphor. He said it was highway robbery. Thompson stood on this spot and he said it was highway robbery. And he said that we were feathering our own nest. I get caught up in it too, but I can tell you that later. But little did we know what was going on between him and Clico at the time. Thompson walked about Barbados, every nook and cranny, abusing the Barbados Labour Party. Talking about how bad the Barbados Labour Party people were. And who was millionaires? And who got checks and who didn't get checks? Little did we know, 3.3 million was being passed through from Clico. Hear me, mate? Clico. Thompson and Thompson's back to the benefit of who? One Leroy Paris. I did not make that up. That is in the forensic report. That is in the forensic audit that came from Deloitte. And I say this here. You understand what $3.3 million could do in Barbados at this time? When poor people can't get any money in Barbados. When these people have doubled the unemployment rate. You understand how much $3.3 million, how much children I can send school? Oh, yeah. no, how much medicines that could buy? Oh, yeah. How much roads that could repair? Oh, yeah. How many houses that could build? Oh, and we sit here and let talk some fool us on this side. But click on the click on the buckle is just but one example. This is symptomatic and symbolic of all that is wrong with the Democratic Labour Party. And we cannot take five more years with the Democratic Labour Party at all. The people of Barbados cannot afford another five years of the Democratic Labour Party. You know the way things are going now, blunder after blunder, misstep after misstep. This is what marks the government of Frandell Stewart. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, my heart bleeds for my country. This is the worst bunch of people that have ever occupied the corridors of government of this country. My heart bleeds for my country tonight. And I say to you tonight, the Democratic Labour Party has no moral authority to come to your house and beg you for a vote in the next election. These people have not kept one promise that they have made to the people of Barbados in the manifesto that they made. Now I know that they don't believe that a manifesto is a social contract with the people and all that there. You're all that there. But the Democratic Labour Party has not kept one of their promises to you. And let me tell you, and then when things get bad, you know the first thing you hear from the mouth is that they blame the global financial crisis. They blame the global financial crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, the only crisis that we have in Barbados is a crisis of competence in our government. That is the only crisis we have. If the Barbados Labour Party were in office, you, you will see. It is at these times that we need a government. It is at these times and difficult times that a government needs to step up to the plate and back. And I say, the agents have lost all faith in government and the institutions of government in Barbados. If you walk around this place, the despondency, the loss of faith in government, it's all over Barbados in the faces of people. You see that these people don't believe that we stand the chance. And every single thing in Barbados, ladies and gentlemen, has gone wrong, misstep to misstep. The Democratic Labour Party will get a walk out funeral procession wrong. <laughs> they will send the horse one place and the car somewhere else. The Democratic Labour Party will get a walk out funeral procession wrong. They will frig up that too. And when you see every single thing in Barbados is on the rise and no solutions in sight at all, at all, at all. If you ask the Dems tonight, your light bill going up, your water bill going up, 
Your gas bill going up. Your land tax bill going up. Your road tax bill going up. Your food bill in the supermarket, everything going up. And then to make matters worse, they increase the VAT on that. So you can imagine that you already have a, a level of inflation that we can't live with and then they increase the VAT. And then that compounds everything else that I've spoken about. I say the night, ladies and gentlemen. Makes sense for poor people. They got a place in their quest store. <laughs> quest store, man. Used to be from the formulary. And that Titan boy, Dorvilles. That Titan boy. He took it off. He, he took the thing off. Of the, you can imagine. These people have walked about. And apart from everything that I've told you, the people of our country who have paid their dues already, we have reduced them now to raising the mixes and they can't even live another couple of years. And I'm saying the same. They have reduced Parliament to a circus. A circus. The language is poor. The language is poor. Can he best? Kenny worse. <laughs> Kenny worse. The bad and the things are bad. The arguments are bad, but the language is even worse. And Parliament is not even worthy of any form of elimination anymore, any form of respect. You know you're gonna keep your children away from when this if the best start and then start talking, grab your children and tell them don't listen to that. Parental guidance, violence the ears. Did he be us now? We were the Kenny Best and Dennis Kelman and that woman Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. A minister of labor that can tell you, a minister of labor that can tell you that unemployment among young people is going up. She can tell how we plan to fix it, what we plan to do about it. You hear government lamenting the fact that things are bad. But this is a monkey government. A poor Ricky government, when I call them. Poor Ricky government. And I said this tonight, Barra and Adams and them must be turning over in the graves, man. And Barra and Tom Adams and Grantley and them must be turning over in their graves to see what this thing has come to. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, as Barbadians, we expect better. As Barbadians, we deserve better than the Democratic Labour Party. Under this BLB, we will restore Barbados. That's right. And we will give you what you deserve. That's right. Getting back to the 14 years of prosperity that we had in this country, man, under Owen Arthur and the Barbados Labour Party. We are going to come be very back to you. And I say this here, look, all this foolishness about, a, about the, we never had a one term government. Let me tell you this, right? We can do this with dignity. We can do this with dignity and class. We ain't gonna behave like African then. But this is a one term government. I say tonight that any right thinking Barbadian would not give the Democratic Labour Party another opportunity to do even worse. We need who ain't have any Barbadian Labour Party back in the house. I am not giving them another chance. I am making an apology tonight. I apologize to Hudson Griffith, the candidate for St. John. I am a, I am apologizing, Hudson. Please bear with me. Hudson is the only body I'm apologizing to because he just came out of a by-election and he lost by about 4,000 votes, and that might be difficult to turn around. Remember, I told you, rubber dub dub two men in a tub. I am saying tonight, after the next election, we might be cross the aisle speaking to Mara alone. Hudson, forgive me. We can speak to Mara alone across the aisle. Because all of them gone. All of them gone. This is the site, ladies and gentlemen, as I told you before, where we were destroyed. Where the greatest hopes was perfect. Um, I was posted on the people of the Barbados. This was the greatest tragedy that we have ever had in elected politics in this country. And the BLP minister suffered, suffered through David Thompson and his lies and the innuendo and the salacious gothic. When Arthur, a man that has done so much for this country, when suffered on this site, when suffered on this site, foolish check. 
He even, David talks and he has his shoes. I'm bringing that to one of you. Clay Maskell! Clay Maskell! You take a man as dignified as Clay Maskell and this man took this hard word foolishness and sought to try to destroy a political career that was at its height. A man that any, any government anywhere in the world would give the right arm to have. And David Thompson sought to destroy that young man with foolishness. Hardwood, he would know what Hardwood was about. And Stuart and them, and Stuart and them, Stuart never distanced himself from that type of bad behavior. The accusations, the innuendo, the gossip, they reveled in it, they enjoyed every moment of it. And they never for one minute distance themselves from the Clico issue. You know, when me and Molly bought the No Confidence motion on March 6, 2009 to the Parliament of Barbados, Belgians were being warned by a responsible opposition. A responsible opposition that is always looking out for you, for the people and for our community. And the Dems laughed it to scorn. The Democratic Labour Party laughed it to scorn. And there was no bigger person laughing and railing on it than Frondel Stewart himself. Frondel Stewart was the Attorney General at the time. And the comments on the matter, his comments on the matter, were not only, were imprudent at best, and reckless at worst. This is the this, this is the chief legal officer of the cabinet. And this is how he goes to this is how he goes to Parliament. But you know this is Stuart in every respect. You know that? Stuart is a lazy man that do not go work. Frandell go to work and help the people. He is known in the legal profession as a procrastinator. The procrastinator in chief. They said you go in the office, you got files all around the desk. Who went out to encourage us to do our files every day? Who went did this every day? Stuart got as much files as you go off, you can't see Stuart. <laughs> then you go through the door, or you understand you can't see Stuart. Because Stuart does not do any work. Stuart is lazy. I need to come and do some work on behalf of the people. But Clico is reminiscent of every action of Frandell Stuart in every way. That is what you see. The eager 11, 11 of them do it was Stuart. And then listen, and people, you remember Stuart, listen, Stuart got some statements. He said people should be paying with their necks. When Eagle left, nothing has happened. He said he was going to deal with the Alexander School and Jeff Gong issue with dispatch. He was going to fix it with dispatch. We are into now stage one, stage two ain't come yet. This is a month gone. And the people cannot know what is the resolution down there at Alexander School. The time he now, I see Alex McDonald there, they're sending him over the line in pass going down to Stuart. Well, if we got to wait for Stuart to solve anything in Barbados, the line is shut down in Barbados. <laughs> for now, Stuart cannot solve anything. In the click on no conference debate, he called the debate frivolous and vexatious. He said it lacked capacity to do damage and should be punished with laughter. That's how Frandell dealt with it. He said Beatrice would have preferred to watch cricket on television rather than listening to Mrs. Mortley's call and her position. And he compared Mrs. Mortley's motion to Horace's arts poetica. You know, he feel like he know more than anybody else, you know. He says the prophecy that Moctis would be in labor and would give birth to mice. That's up from that day with it, you know. And then Listen to the puppet. Listen to the puppet. He says, I have heard nothing to shake my knowledge or understanding of Pico. I have heard no such thing and therefore I want to signal to this house and to the country immediately that this motion does not qualify for my personal support. That is how Fandel Stewart dealt with the Clico matter. This is our Attorney General, the man that is no war Prime Minister. He says I will be voting against it. My faith in the Minister of Finance remains intact. And all this time his cronies around him were beating the desk. Beating the desk and beating the chest. 
And I say that they should all stand condemned here tonight over the Kiko issue. I am not bringing any one of them. Are you going for all of them? All, Fucking crazy. He said, this is our AG, you know, this is our Attorney General at the time. He's now be Prime Minister. I will be down the road and listen to me in that house down the road there. Because he's on his lap. We can soon get you out in there. He says, he had not heard anyone in Barbados complain since January the 31st, 2009. To get the claim settled and leaving dissatisfied. He said, not one, not one complaint. And now listen to you. He said, those things happen with Narsham and Great Northern. In fact, on my desk are still claims to be settled in relation to Great Northern. And this short attack, the statutory fund legislation, he said, he reasoned that if the rationale for its existence of such a fund was to protect depositors and policyholders, one would have thought that the legislation would contain major penalties for no, for no compliance. But the penalty was a mere $2,500 fine by a magistrate. And then listen to the joker. He says, that is the legislation that was passed by the Barbara Civil Party in 1996. You hear in here today how critical the fund is. But there is no real distinction between a company representing 40,000 policyholders failing to comply with the statutory fund and a vagrant in Bridgetown being caught with a spliff. That is how, that is how the Dems then laugh, all of them laughing to, 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 to serious laughter in Parliament. And then they laugh at all of the policyholders' faces and the pension holders' faces in Barbados. I said tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Labour Party had an opportunity to join with us and deal with this issue when this issue was prominent and had come out in, in Trinidad and they laughed at you they laughed at you who had put your hard earned money into Clico they should all stand condemned tonight and this wicked insensitive bunch should be put out of parliament unceremoniously I said and this short clause this is how he closed he said he said that he didn't expect the motion to become a point scoring exercise or an opportunity to disclose personal affairs the leader of the opposition speech is nothing more than salacious rubbish Stuart called Miss Mortley's contribution salacious rubbish tonight we told you so and then he says, what a thing, what a thing. This man called Miss Motley speech rubbish. And I said, AG, no PM Stewart. He never said that he would seek to amend the legislation. He never said that he would seek to create a better opportunity for the future of a further protection of policyholders. He laughed it out of court as it's his reckless, insensitive style. Stewart is no good for Barbados. Check his record. Stuart, do some work man, for the people of Barbados. I love it Chris don't want him. Donville don't want him. Lashley, Nanny too. Lashley don't want him. Mara don't want him. Harley Henry don't want him. Harley Tommy Lynch, you have a national duty to perform. <laughs> I saw Harley Henry in the airport. He told me, no, I let you have a national duty to perform to get rid of this idiot from around us. <laughs> the exact words of Harley Henry. <laughs> and if none of them don't want him, why shouldn't you? If the people that are in his cabinet and next to him don't want him, why should you? I said, Send him and his group packing whenever he calls the election. He says that he ain't calling the general election. That we will not pressure him to call the election the Barbados Civil Party. I say, ladies and gentlemen, you know Thompson say he called the last one. I am telling you tonight, the people of Barbados, you need to pressure him to call the election, man. Tell Stuart, the people of Barbados, not the Barbados Civil Party. The people of Barbados are fed up. Man. We had enough of this. Sure, call the election, man. Call it, man. And you so big and bold, you call the election. I say, Thompson said he called the last one. And he lied to all of you. And nowhere it was felt more than in this spot here at Hackey Hall. This is where we got beaten, you know. I, I still have the duty. We get beaten here. Right <laughs> and I say this here character assassinations, disrespect for good people. 
You know, he suffered personally during this whole David Thompson debacle, you know. You know, David Ellis get on the radio and try to make out the eye, the blinking sunlight here, but I ain't done yet. David Ellis got on the radio and tried to paint me as some millionaire. And I, I, I was instant millionaire, but I get some money for that, right? But I'm saying this here, and all I ever did was do what they just do. I bought a house. Me and my wife, I and the children, we bought a house. We do what every property wants to do. Huh? And let me tell you, I don't own a plantation. I never did, and I never will. I bought a house. Two people who work for good salaries in Barbados went to Scotia Bank and got a mortgage. And I tell you tonight, no. I asked Stephen Smith at Scotia Bank to reveal anyone when they could go. My mortgage number at Scotia Bank is zero zero. Four zero zero eight eight three seven eight. I can repeat it, you know. This blasted foolishness has got to stop. This damn foolishness has got to stop. Zero zero four zero zero eight eight three seven eight. Stephen Smith, call and ask for him. Ask Scotia Bank in Broad Street. That is where my mortgage is. And when I left office. Like anybody else, when your salary get cut in half, I struggle to pay mine too. And the plan to put me in a lawyer hand, I went to a chambers called Trinity Chambers. I said I want to foreclose for my house. I could listen. I am willing to withstand the scrutiny of any audit, forensic or otherwise. Right. And I said this tonight. <laughs> you know that thing did a lot of damage to my wife and my family, you know. But I said tonight here. I feel that every single candidate should declare their assets before they go into the general election. I tell Stuart tonight from this platform, pass the law. I am willing to declare my assets, all of my assets, before we go into the next general election. I feel every candidate should be made to do it. We need to know where you got now and where you got where you come out. And I say this here, let us not go through another election with what happened being repeated. We deserve better. The people of Barbados and the people of the Barbados of Park deserve better. Don't let any leader again like David Thompson, what he did, come here and fool you about what people got or what you alleged to have. When we know now, when we know finally you know what he really had and what he really did. Stuart, pass the legislation, man, and let all the candidates declare their assets before we run. Make sure, sure, as well as you promise that the depositors and click on get back their money. You say that you will do anything to make them sure that they get it back, and the Barbara Civil Party will join with you in anything that is legitimate and sensible to get back their money. I say it tonight, ladies and gentlemen, don't let me go down that road again. I say, fret not thyself because of evil doers, because they will be cut down like the grass. Ladies and gentlemen, stare it on after and the BIP. Let us restore Barbados to what it was and stop making us the laughing stock of the Caribbean. Put back on after the Barbados of a party in office and let us once again live for prosperity for you, your children, and your grandchildren. I'm obliged to you. Good night.